we've now moved to the west side of Wilton House, to the Upper Cloisters. Added by the 11th Earl at the beginning of the 19th century, these long corridors link all the state rooms and allow us to move freely around the house. Now here's the next painting that we're going to examine. But before I tell you the title of this picture, I wonder how you would name it. It's one of a number of versions of this popular scene. Peter Bruegel the Elder, generally considered to be one of the greatest Flemish artists of the 16th century, founded a dynasty of Flemish painters. His two artist sons, Peter and Jan, also had painter sons, and further descendants carried on the family tradition well into the 18th century. Here, we're looking at a painting by Bruegel's eldest son, Peter. He was known as Peter Bruegel the Younger, so as to distinguish him from his famous father. Born in Brussels in 1564, he mainly worked in Antwerp. What can you see about the scene, the people and their activities? Has the artist used colour to add to the overall effect? Let's play detectives again and see what we can discover. In comparison to the enormous painting on canvas by Van Dyck, this one measures only 38 centimetres by 56, or 14 and a half inches by 22, and is painted on wood. The artist has painted a winter landscape that today you might capture in a photograph, and within a small area he's created an impression of distance. We appear to be standing high up, looking over houses and trees and numerous figures skating or walking on the frozen river. This river runs through the snow-covered village. We could be looking at a real place. What name do you think this painting is known by? I'll be surprised if you've guessed. It's called the bird trap. This is because it features a bird trap, one that wouldn't be permitted today. In the foreground on the right of the picture are two large trees, near which is the bird trap which gives the painting its name. The trap looks like an old door propped up on a stick. A rope is tied to the stick and the rope disappears into a window in a cottage. Maybe some crumbs have been placed beneath the door to attract the birds and then, when the rope is pulled from the cottage, the door will crash down on the unsuspecting birds. The use of black and white, grey and brown and the touches of red make it a very wintry scene. The figures on the ice give a happy feeling to the picture as they all enjoy themselves in the snow. The frozen river winds its way through the village and the villagers are taking advantage of the ice, walking, skating or playing games. They could be playing an early form of hockey or even curling. In the middle distance, a bridge crosses the river. The roofs of the houses are long and steep to allow the snow to slide off. A church completes the village scene. The bare branches of the trees are a further indication of the season. In fact, the more you look at this painting, the more you notice. There is so much detail. This shows the artist's skill at portraying the countryside and the lives of the people who live there. But now we come to an interesting viewpoint, an unanswered question. Some experts looking at this painting, seeing the prominent position of the bird trap, see in it a special meaning for the people living in Bruegel's time. The birds under the door, seemingly oblivious to the danger they are in, are connected to the danger and foolishness of the people on the ice. You may not have seen many severe winters, but you know how dangerous it is to play on a frozen river or pond. The same experts suggest that the huge crow in the top right-hand corner stands out like a warning to the birds near the trap. Similarly, it's often argued that it's not by chance that the two birds on the bush in the foreground are the same size as the two men in the centre, enjoying themselves on the ice. So. This is something for you to think about. Are you happy to accept this painting as no more than a wintry picture? 
or has this peaceful scene with its quaint houses and happy skaters got a more serious message of danger and foreboding? Perhaps the comparative sizes of people and birds are no more than the chance of perspective. You can discuss it amongst yourselves later.